Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia News Line and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 11th of April. PM Modi advocates peaceful India-China ties, talks on democracy, article 370 and Ram Mandir. Imran Khan warns of economic collapse in Pakistan, fears another Dhaka tragedy. And Muslims in India celebrate Eid al-Fitr with mass prayers. And now for all the details. India and China should urgently address the prolonged situation on their border. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said in remarks to a US-based publication on Wednesday in an apparent softening of tone on bilateral issues between the two nuclear-armed neighbours. Modi said, It is my belief that we need to urgently address the prolonged situation on our borders so that the abnormality in our bilateral interactions can be put behind us. He added that a stable and peaceful relationship between New Delhi and Beijing is not just important for the two countries, but beneficial for the entire region and the world. Rejecting allegations of curbs on press and democracy, he said that a few people who have lost connection with the people of India, their thought processes, feelings and aspirations tend to live in their own echo chambers of alternate realities. They conflate their own dissonance with the people with dubious claims of diminishing media freedom, he added. The Indian Prime Minister also touched upon the abrogation of Article 370 in Kashmir and construction of the Ram Mandir in his conversation, both of which were part of the BJP's election manifesto for years. As India goes to polls next week, opinions polls suggest a comfortable majority for the BJP-led alliance, with PM Modi potentially equaling the third term record of India's first Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru. One terrorist was neutralized on Thursday morning during an encounter with security forces in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. In a statement, the Kashmir Zone Police said a joint cordon and search operation was launched by security forces in Fresipora village of Pulwama following a tip-off about the presence of a terrorist in the area. The operation turned into a gunfight after the joint forces narrowed down the location. The body of one terrorist has been retrieved and identified, the police said in a statement, adding that arms, ammunition and incriminating material were also recovered from the slain terrorist. The operation was ongoing till the last reports came in. Expressing concern over the recent developments in Pakistan, jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan has said that the present situation could result in economic collapse with the circumstances leading to the 1971 Dhaka tragedy. Sharing Khan's message, Barrister Raja said, Khan looked determined, though worried for the country as when people are not given rights, economy of the country cannot grow. Raja said, time and again he hinted that he was ready to talk to the military establishment, claiming that it would be in the best interest of the country. The powerful army plays an oversized role in making and breaking governments in Pakistan. The military has directly ruled Pakistan for half of its history since 1947. Although it denies interference in politics, Imran Khan blames he was ousted from Prime Minister's post after he had lost the army support. Moving on, members of the Baloch ethnic minority held massive protests across Pakistan on Wednesday to voice their concern over rising cases of enforced disappearances in Balochistan region. A report. While Pakistan celebrated Eid on Wednesday, members of the Baloch ethnic minority held nationwide protests to highlight enforced disappearances and other human rights violations. In several areas of Balochistan, Karachi and capital Islamabad, women and children actively participated in massive anti-army rallies and raised slogans to demand justice. Activists said while people worldwide celebrate Eid at home, scores of Baloch people are bearing pain and suffering with no details about whereabouts of their loved ones. 
They highlighted Baloch people are being subjected to torture and harassment just for demanding basic rights of self-determination and right to life and education. Activists have long accused that Pakistani army and spy agencies have been carrying out so-called military operations in the region with an aim to eliminate the Baloch people. The supreme leader of the Taliban, Hebatullah Akhundzada, on Wednesday made a special appearance in public and delivered a speech in which he admonished the international community for their criticism of the Taliban rule. Since assuming power in Afghanistan, Akhundzada has remained largely secluded with only a few public appearances. During his tenure, he has governed through degrees, imposing a strict interpretation of Islam that has isolated Afghanistan on the global stage. In his address, he accused countries involved in the US-led invasion of Afghanistan of continuing to target the nation with propaganda and evil tactics. While the Taliban government ostensibly sits in capital Kabul, Akhundzada operates from hideouts in Kandahar, considered the heartland of the Islamist movement. Since the fall of the foreign-backed government in August 2021, his Taliban administration has ushered in curbs on women and girls which the United Nations has condemned as gender apartheid. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe has stressed the need for the legalization of the agreement with the IMF, which he said will ensure that the benefits reach the people of the island nation swiftly. Vikramasinghe, addressing a gathering, said the collaboration with the International Monetary Fund is a crucial step to revitalize Sri Lanka's economy and added that it was the nation's final opportunity for economic recovery. He highlighted Sri Lanka's history of reversing decisions after agreeing with the lender and said legalization will ensure no turning away after agreeing with the lender. Notably, earlier last month, Sri Lankan minister Bandula Gunavardhana echoed a similar stance as he highlighted the violation of the past 16 agreements with the lender, which has led the country to bankruptcy. However, the country is slowly recovering with the IMF2 reaching a staff level agreement enabling the island nation to access $337 million from the nearly $3 billion bailout approved in 2023. And Muslims across India on Thursday celebrated Eid al-Fitr with mass prayers, feasting and acts of charity. Take a look. Muslims across India on Thursday observed Eid al-Fitr, marking the end of Islam's holiest fasting month of Ramadan that honors the revelation of the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Hundreds of devotees turned up for mass prayers at the Mughal era Taj Mahal in Agra and the iconic Jama Masjid in Indian capital New Delhi. Eid al-Fitr is celebrated on the first day of Shawwal, the 10th month of Islamic lunar calendar. Eid celebrations mark the purification achieved by a month of special prayers and dawn to dusk fasting, one of the five pillars of Islam. It is also a time to engage in various acts of charity. गुरबा मसाकिन फकीरों को खाना खिलाते हैं और उनको फितरा अदा करते हैं हम यही चाहते हैं कि आपस में इत्तेफाक और मोहब्बत बना रहे सब में सबके इत्तेफाक रहे खुश रहें सब Similar scenes were witnessed in other parts of the country as worshippers gathered at local mosques and prayer grounds to offer prayers the celebration of Eid depends on the sighting of the moon and its celebration varies in different countries. The day begins with early morning prayers and then family visits and feast. Muslims <laughs> That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.